Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, and today it's time to go fuck up a dragon. Again. I mean, it's a different dragon, but we did fuck up a dragon before. I like that she genuinely seems lost for a second, unsure where to turn, while well, her plane sinks. Let's go. I genuinely believed he was going to do a full starfish faceplant right onto the deck plating. <laughs> handing her off like a sack of potatoes. It's okay, little one. I'll be right back. Mommy! Mommy! Luca's capabilities just keep growing stronger and stronger. That's genuinely a raw line, and I really like it. The absolute disrespect. Oh, another talkative type. I don't think I've got time to entertain your blather. I'd much rather hear it straight from your boss. Haha, you wouldn't say Fanny has been that for long? He won't. For the long run, he had done to us for a long run, he had done to us for a long run, he had done to us for a long run, he had done to us for a long run, he had done to us for a long run. The witch hunts. Rest, I think. Being Sarma Emma Dil Pa, who play Iadon Tordu, who parts of Bosi, who are on the Aldi, Galga, who are on the Kaosko. For once, that wasn't the end of the cutscene, expecting you to dodge instantaneously. So yeah, um, as I was saying before, it was the previous chapter that the escalation curve really kicks off. We've gone from fairly ordinary uh, exploration of fairly ordinary locations, for, at least for game standards of ordinary, to, you know, wizard battles in heaven, fighting on the back of a uh, moving aeroplane, Absurd sky high kung fu nonsense. Uh, and now we're having a. What do you even call this? A surfboard rocket launcher battleship dragon battle. It's, um. It's pretty cool and I like it. Um, this is actually my favourite boss in the game by far. I really like its design, both visually and in terms of gameplay. There's, um, there's lots to recommend it on both of those factors. In terms of mechanics, I think that it really gains a lot by um, simply not being as uh, restrictive as the previous bosses. Every other bo boss we've fought so far has had a really small area that you can move in and has had these really prescriptive kind of almost two-dimensional zones that you need to use. Whereas this boss, you can just freely go all around him, doing all kinds of ridiculous stunts, and um, you actually get a lot more... Um, essentially his attacks are much more dodgeable, which makes for a more fun fight because you feel less um, like you just have to tank the damage. You feel more skillful because you do more stuff. Um, additionally, surfing is just fun. So. I really like this, by the way. He seems genuinely terrified of this thing. So, again, that calls into question the kind of power differential between the entities of heaven and those of hell. Like, this isn't even the end of the fight, but he really doesn't want to go near this giant horrible spider. And I mean, neither would I, if I was threatened with a giant horrible spider. But, um... Yeah, why does heaven fear hell so much if they're not, you know, weaker? Why is there a power differential? 
So, in terms of his visual design, um, there's two major influences. One is quite obviously the um, pre-existing angel design, which is uh, the kind of baroque gilt scroll work combined with, you know, beautiful smooth marble. Also, I just want to point out his wings form a uh, shark fin whenever he goes underwater, which is a really nice touch. It's just a clever little visual gag. It also seems like his wings are entirely artificial, unlike the rest of him. So, um, yeah, we have the same uh, gilt baroque aesthetic, but then we also have this interesting little addition of... Um, there's a very particular uh, mechanical industrial aesthetic in a lot of Je uh, Japanese science fiction. I've been a huge fan of that visual aesthetic for a really long time. I find it really pleasing to the eye. These kind of pseudo-real, hyper-detailed mechanical interactions. Um, you know, gimbal joints, spinning waldos, all of these different components. And um, I think it's really, just really cool to combine that sort of um, mechanized aesthetic with a big baroque dragon. It just works really well in my opinion. So he also mentioned that um, Vigrid had become, he implied that Vigrid's technology had become a source of strength to heaven or to Paradiso. So he's also the only, uh, the only one of the bosses that seems to have been modified in some way rather than just existing in the way that it does. Uh, because as you can see, he has mechanical additions to his joints, and his wings appear to be completely mechanical. So, there's a lot you could infer about that, about the nature of his character. Perhaps he felt weaker than the other angels, perhaps. Well, any number of things. Um, but it also um, represents uh, an increasing allegiance between the human world and the... Uh, oh, I don't like that. Between the human world and uh, other dimensional entities that have preferred to remain in the shadows. So, in this phase, this is the final phase, we just need to get as close to the bottom as possible. Um, triggering which time off of these uh, laser beam attacks is a good way to gain distance. It's one of the few ways you can actually noticeably increase your uh, the amount you're gaining over him. But yeah, um, even in as technological looking a creature as this, I like that they still have the weird internals of the angels with these eye tentacles coming and poking out. Kind of phallic, actually. But yeah, um, this guy's an absolutely beautiful design and I just enjoy looking at him. So, yeah, what did I do? I talked about his physical design and the boss design. Ouch. Okay. Oh, god. Three in a row, huh? Got that one. So yeah, um, in this final stage you just wail on him until the end. But, um... This is honestly the only boss that I don't mind repeating. It's nice to be able to have something so responsive. It's also interesting how he becomes completely recontextualized in this moment. He was so vast and imposing on the surface of the ocean, and here he seems so small and pathetic. Just a skinny, wriggly, sad little lizard being torn apart by giant... Uh... I was going to say skeletons, but that's not what those are. Birds, they mean things. I like his upside down mouth as well. I guess there's a running thing of things having upside down faces in this game. I have no idea why you would want this stone. It would look absolutely terrible on you. Much too flashy. <laughs> <laughs> so Bayonetta clearly still has no idea what's actually going on. Still bouncing from location to location, destroying things with no clue what's happening. She's kind of just a grenade of a person at this point. Welcome aboard, Cheshire. 
Oh, fucking hell! That's a face and a half. Mummy! I told you I'd be right back. <laughs> Shouldn't you be, you know, flying this thing? I'm a bit occupied at the moment. Well, so much for the subtle approach. We might as well have speakers on this thing blaring ride of the fucking Valkyries. Come now, we're VIPs. You know, nothing says you've made it in life like a private helicopter. Then welcome aboard Air Luca, Flight 001. This is your captain, Luca, speaking. Fasten your safety belts, as this may be a bumpy flight. I love Luca's weird little mood swings. He's like a he's like a Labrador retriever or something. He goes from sardonic bitterness at things not having gone his way to uh goofy cheerfulness like all you do i need to do is distract him and suddenly he's he's quipping along with the rest of them actually he has he has kind of the air of like the younger kid who's hanging around with the older kids and doesn't really get what they're talking about or, or their modes of interaction but is still um playing along and trying his best to mimic them which makes for a difference with um Cereza, who just kind of it's just kind of there just kind of, uh, oh wow, my mouse is messed up. Uh, just kind of there, really, and doing whatever it is that seems natural. Round over. But yeah, um, as I, what I meant when I said that she was a grenade of a person is that she's she has no idea what's going on. She doesn't care to understand. She doesn't understand, and she doesn't care to understand. And she's also incredibly destructive without much uh, regard to the context. You just put her in a location and she destroys everything. Anyway, that is going to be all from me for today. I'll catch you later. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and there's links to my other projects in the description. Thank you so much for watching.